All right, so now it is time for Savages versus Koyuki. In game one, Savages opts for his rogue deck, and Koyuki is going to be playing a Warlock. So let's start this off by taking a quick look at Savages' rogue deck, which is looking almost exactly the same as AP drops. I'm trying to do a side-by-side -side comparison right here. It's pretty similar. There, Okay, so there's a couple of differences yeah. uh, that I'll point out immediately, and that yeah. is that there's no Black Knight in Savage's Rogue. No, no Blood Knight uh, in Savage's Rogue either. No Blood Knight either, and there is a Blade Fury in Savage's Rogue, which for is the, for the rogue board potential board clear I was talking about earlier. Um, it's a very powerful card if you pair it with, say, uh, a Deadly Poison Dagger. You get basically three damage to the entire board, Plus three damage to the opponent's face. Yeah, which is uh, which is nice. We've still got the Leroy plus Cold Blood in there, which mm -hmm. we didn't get to see happen last no. game or last no. match. I'm trying to figure out where the other card is. Uh, oh, it looks like okay. So Savages is running two Loot Hoarders, uh, whereas AP Drop is only running one Loot Hoarder. Okay. So there's there's the other difference. So minus Blood Knight, minus Black Knight, enter uh, enter the Blade Fury, and a second Loot Hoarder. Other than that, everything else in this deck is exactly the same. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be seeing very similar play at uh, AP Drops, I think. Now, moving over to Kuyuki's uh, Warlock, uh, which is named uh, affectionately Nothing Beats Lock. Yes. Which uh, This is an aggro lock. At this time, was not an untrue statement. No. Lock was, was king of the castle. Yeah, this is uh, this is an insanely powerful lock deck. Um, I played a very similar lock deck like this for a while. Uh, it's just super aggro. I constantly have more creatures on the board than you do, and deal with it type yeah, of lock. My, mine back uh, back around when, uh, the Christmas time was looking a lot like this too. The only thing it's missing is is Demon Fire, which I was running. Uh, so yeah, so the Demon Fire actually kind of fell out of favor, which is surprising because the turn one Void Walker, turn two Demon Fire, your own Void Walker is a very powerful opener. Um, uh, or the turn one Flame Imp, turn two Demon Fire, your Flame Imp, is also very powerful. Uh, but that kind of went away as I think people just realized they'd rather just put more creatures on the board on turn Absolutely. two. Absolutely, and you're sinking, you have two cards in one when you buff it, and then when that mm -hmm. dies, you're losing two cards for usually one card. So exactly. if you invest too highly, which is honestly the issue with Priest and why I think Priest has uh, fallen out of, out of fashion, um, you just it's, get too invested in one creature, and when the one creature dies, you're you're all of a sudden pretty far behind. Exactly. When you lose when you lose two cards in one creature, it uh, it really really sets you back, and it's hard to recover from that. Uh, so what you see a lot more of is these. This is this is why cards like Shadow Sun Cleric, Dark Iron Dwarf, Defender of Argus. These cards are so powerful and popular because not only do you buff something, but you didn't put two cards into it you put another creature on the board so uh that's why those cards are much more uh you know preferable in these types of situations is you're, you're not throwing all your eggs in one basket yep. uh, but this this deck also runs two mortal coils which is a little interesting you don't see that very much in the aggro decks because generally the soul fires is kind of the end of the removal uh, but mortal coil is a very powerful card because it allows you to finish off a creature that you couldn't have killed off, you know, otherwise, and, you get the draw and card also draw. So, yeah, it's a very powerful card. Um, it's it's also running a Shadow Flame, which is another card you don't see quite as often. Uh, but the Shadow Flame Sylvanas play is pretty good. Uh, you can also Shadow Flame something that he buffs with his Dark Iron Dwarf. So there's lots of uh, potential here to clear the board and continue on with his aggression. Um, so, you know, I like that card as well. Absolutely. The only other thing I think to note in this Warlock deck is the lack of Jaraxxus. No Jaraxxus, yeah. So he's not looking to uh, life tap away and then suddenly go back up to 15. Yeah. He's trying to just finish the game by, say, turn 6 or 7. Right. He has no interest in getting to turn 9. Yeah, no exactly. You see all. in this deck, there's nothing above 6, uh, six mana costs. So right. he wants to finish the game quickly. He wants to go... We'll probably see a lot of uh, creatures hitting the board and going straight for the face with this deck. Indeed. And that's the correct way to play it. Right. So we've seen a, a rogue deck. It's very similar to AP Drops, which has, has led to some really good games. And it's looking like a very aggressive warlock. I'm, I'm excited to see this game one. So let's get right into it. Game one of Savages versus Koyuki. Rogue versus Warlock. And these are two very good players. So we're not going to see a lot of mistakes as well. Uh, both of these guys are probably going to play this out uh, pretty much right down the middle. And, and we're going to see some action. Gonna, Go ahead and mulligan that Shadow Flame and that Dark Iron Dwarf. Oh, he's going to keep the Shadow Flame. 
Interesting. Yeah. So I think once he sees that it's a rogue deck, he realizes uh, it's going to be a battle for the board. And so he's going to hold on to the Shadow Flame to ensure that at some point he will be able to take back the board. Yeah, with all the low drop creatures that Kyuki had in his hand, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised by his, his opening hand. It's not, it's not ideal. He's got a, a six yeah. mana and a four mana minion. His he had game. none of them at the beginning, which is very weird for this deck. But he very quickly draws into his Argent Squire and his Void Walker. Yes. Uh, but so that, he got them a, a couple turns too late. But yeah, that coin plus the uh, SI seven agent that deals with the miss uh, two pre uh, pre patch novice engineer with two health and leaves a three three on the board. It's a really really powerful turn two play. It's uh, why you don't see a lot of uh, you, you basically just don't see. A lot of uh, scrubs anymore, the Defias ringleaders, because rather than coining out the scrub on turn two, you'd rather coin out the SI7 agent. Or sorry, coining it out on turn one, you'd rather coin out the SI7 on turn two, which is just much more powerful play yeah. and just gives you the board. Which, by the way, please excuse the the size ratio of this of this replay. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot we could do. We were kind of kind of stuck with what the the players uh, provided us, so we apologize for the ratio in discrepancy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little awkward, but uh, it's basically because um, when the when the players played the game, they sent us videos of differing size, and so we uh, we're doing the best we can with it. Yep. Yeah, thanks again to Warren for putting these together. So, all right, so that SI seven agent definitely getting his uh, his money's worth out of it. I want to point out though that Warren is affectionately known as Gimps around these parts. Uh, that is his uh, Twitch name and okay. uh, what he goes by. So if you're looking to check him out, you can find him on Twitch under Gimps with a Z. Okay, twitch.tv slash Gimps with a Z. So here you see the power of the rogue and the ability to just continue to clear this board. Um, now, if he plays the, the problem is if he plays his novice, he can't dagger up again and then cold uh, deadly poison his dagger. So... He'd be basically forced to trade the SI7 with this uh, with this Shattered Sun Cleric, which is not ideal. So I think he's considering right now whether he should just re-dagger Deadly Poison and just go ahead and kill it and just go to the face with a 3-2. Well, he's not going to opt for that. Is he just going to go ahead and kill it? still thinking about it. Oh, he's going to go for the draw, it looks like. See what he gets. Not an answer. Yeah, so it looks like he's just going to have to trade, hit the face for one, and then re-dagger, preparing himself for the ability to use his uh, Deadly Poison on a fresh dagger next yeah. turn. He's already gotten pretty good value out of that uh, out of that SI7 agent, so it's not the worst thing in the world. That's true. The SI7 agent is basically uh, a two-for-one. Well, three-for-one, actually, because it killed the uh, it also killed the Voidwalker. So. Yes. All right. All right, so Sylvanas hits the board. Sylvanas, big card. Uh, however, I think he can deal with it without losing any creatures with the uh, Eviscerate. He'll have to combo that out with a Deadly Poison, however. And then he won't, unfortunately, have another play beyond that. Oh, if you're sure. Yeah, that's the way to go, because otherwise your opponent gets the Novice Engineer, which even though it's one yeah. 1-2, there's no, no point in giving them a... Yeah, so he can go, oh, I didn't even see that there was an Argent Squire there at the back of his hand, so that's okay. That works, he does have something on the board now, and he's. I think he's considering whether to cold blood this and have a 5-1 with a shield, which would be quite a problem, but I think and you want to save the cold blood for Leroy. Yeah, so. absolutely, that, that is a win condition right there, and looking at Koyuki's hand, though, that wouldn't have been the worst play, he doesn't have an answer for it. Yeah, he would not have had an answer for it, but again, I think Savages is correct not to do that, uh, bide his time a little bit more, uh... Now, see, Koyuki doesn't really have a quality play here other than maybe just drop the commander and go straight for the face. Um, unlike the rogue, Koyuki doesn't have a way to just deal one damage with his hero ability. So, And if he life taps, he loses the ability to play an Argent commander. So I think with the aggressive nature of this Warlock deck, the correct play is just, yeah, there you go. So he just drops it and goes just to the face. Just deal 4 damage and, and leave a 4-2 with Divine Shield on the board. Exactly, yeah. You can't really argue with that. Now, uh, Savages has a couple of options here. He... I think his best option is go ahead and just clear with the Divine Shield, Divine Shield action, and then just kill it with your dagger. Uh, but you might as well draw something first. See. Uh, gets nothing useful now. So I think we're going to go ahead and see the... Uh, pop the Divine Shield with your Divine Shield, and then go ahead and kill it off with your dagger. Here we go. Yep. Three to play. You're left with a 4-4 four, four and a 1-1. One, one. Exactly. So he has quality board control right now. Uh, it's going to be very tough to deal with. 
But the uh, Argent Commander is going to come out again. Two of them in a row. Pretty good. He knows it's going to die again to another dagger attack, but he also knows that it's going to deal four damage to Savage's face. And, you know, it, it, this this Warlock deck is kind of a face race. He's uh, He doesn't mind that these creatures are getting daggered off as long as they're getting that value of damage to right. the face. If you're wondering why I didn't play the Young Priestess, it's because it would have just died to the Arctic Squire. Exactly. That, that, that play basically would have done him no good. And also, the one health it would have given... To you know, if the Argent Commander was its old form, where it would have been given, uh, it would have been given one health and gone up to four, he probably would have played it yeah, because that would have made it so had... it was out of range of the dagger. Yeah, the old Argent Commander had uh, had three health as opposed to two. It was yeah. just an insane card. Mm -hmm. So he life taps and plays just the just the Black Knight to kill off the buffed up and taunted. Uh, Harvest Golem, which I agree with. I think, you know, right now, he couldn't have done too much else in that turn, aside from uh, Soul Firing, and if he had done that, he would have lost, potentially, one of his really good cards in his hand, so. Now, he can deal with this Black Knight pretty easily. I mean, he's got Dark Iron Dwarf, he's got Argent Commander, he's got a lot of ways to deal with this. That's what we call uh, options. Yeah. I think, honestly, what I would do is, I, I, I don't know if I would want to face tank another 4 damage against uh, an aggressive Warlock. So I think you might see the Dark Iron Dwarf. But no, he's going to go ahead. Okay. Well, he so I think could, we're going to see Argent Commander plus Dagger this then. This isn't necessarily... I mean, I might just lose the 2-1, use the Argent Commander, and then run my damage Golem into him. Yeah. It's not... I it's, mean, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I mean, your, your, your Golem... So at this point, it died for free to the Black Knight. But basically, then it gets to have its revenge. Uh, so it's, it's not terrible. Uh, exactly. However, if you can keep creatures, you generally opt to do so. Oh, he's going to go ahead and do the cold blood. All right. Now, is he just going to go to the face with all of this? I think he is. The, the fact that he played that cold blood leads me to believe that he might just be going face, face, face. I fight. That looks like... The, yeah, because otherwise that's... I mean... Okay, now he's going to trade off the 2-1 and the 3-3. Three, three. Okay. All right. Okay, and that's... I... I, I don't know if I would have gone face face, so uh, I yeah. I yeah, think that was oh, he can pop the bubble with the mortal coil and soul fire that eight two. He can try and get a lucky dagger out with the with the knife juggler. Yeah. I think you knife juggler, young priestess, and you go ahead and uh, Argus and Argus them both because the fact is that you still have enough mana for this mortal coil. Okay, first dagger soul misses. Fire. Yeah, hits, oh, is he gonna shadow flame the young okay. priestess? It seems like a strange play. One. I think he can still try to get lucky here because if it hits either one of these minions, he's actually in a good spot. Yeah, and then you could just you could use the two cards to get rid of the. Okay, looks like he's. Okay, so I think he's considering to he's considering mortal coiling the the divine shield off and then shadow flaming the young priestess. The okay. problem with this though is that you don't leave enough mana to do anything else this turn. You're basically left with a lone knife juggler. Which is gonna die. <laughs> it is gonna die. Yeah, that's one of those believe, cards. Believe me that, when I tell you, it's that hidden dead. text that we we joke about called dies. Yeah, it's just it's too good to live. Now here is where the old school Dark Iron Dwarf was so damn powerful. That extra two health is persistent, stays on that loot order. Extra two attack, you mean? Yeah, the, or sorry, the it's, two attack. Yeah, so it doesn't help it at all against that mortal coil, which just kills no. it and draws Koyuki a card. But it also draws Savages a card because that was a loot hoarder. Well, here he can actually Argus this. Uh, he can Argus this. Yeah, so the Argus is the Voidwalker out of range of the four four, but he just kills the four four anyway because he's got the Soulfire, and that Soulfire was absolutely free. It didn't cost it didn't him a card. Cost it didn't cost him mana. Had, had no card in hand. Yeah. That is the dream. Draws that Blade Fury, which would take care of the Blood Imp, but leave everything else on the Void, the void Walker and the Argus would, would yeah. survive that. Well, he actually, though, can... Uh, Blade Fury does gain spell power damage, so he can actually play the Blood Mage first, and it'll do four damage. So then he can actually dagger up again and finish off. He's just, I think, figuring out if he has enough mana to do all this. And he doesn't now because he just played Sylvanas. I know, yeah, at least play a Blood Mage first. Might as well. Yeah. At this juncture, if you're gonna. So this will leave everything it. but a two-one with taunt, and that's pretty good. It's not a bad place to be, no. so, especially when both players now are top decking. 
And Kayuki is in a really bad spot with only 9 health and a card in his hand that's going to deal damage to him if he plays it. As well as and the life tapping option, which will also deal damage to himself. This is, if he this is where you uh, start to think, maybe I should have put a Jaraxxus in here. <laughs> Jaraxxus would be fantastic right now. <laughs> Yeah, because actually with Jirax is what he could what he could do here if he had it is he could actually kill the uh, kill the Savannah without losing anything, and then be set up in a really nice position. Okay, well this is actually okay because Savannah can't die to anything right now. Um, however, oh, he's going to. Oh wait, no, because he can't. Well, ah, now that is the end good. of the game. I was gonna say he couldn't combo out the SI seven agent. But he couldn't, but the uh, loot hoarder gave him a card. That's the end of the game. So game one going to savages uh, over Koyuki. That was rogue decks, man. They are quite strong. I wonder if we're gonna see a uh, see a, a pattern in this tournament. Uh, so not a disappointing game one. A lot of back and forth there. Uh, unfortunately, Koyuki's warlock just was didn't get that fast aggressive start. That really sets that deck up to shine. Uh, I think that was actually where he lost the game. Was the very beginning he didn't have those one drops until he was already past turn two. Exactly. And that's really where the warlock deck shines. Is I mean, if you look at his deck, he's got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten one drops, and somehow did not have a single one of them in his opening hand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a third and, of his deck. And if you're looking at this way, it's more than that. Soul Fire and Moral Coil don't count. We're looking at Argent Squire, Blood Imp, Flame Imp, Void Walker, Young Priestess. Yeah, those are all cards that can be dropped on turn one. Uh, and he had you know, fairly, that. especially uh, you know, against most classes. Against the Rogue, you probably don't want to drop a Young Priestess on turn one, but uh, it's it's generally fine if you're going first because they'll have to coin out the dagger to deal with it. Um, and, and you know, so it's it's really just that lock deck. Just he got a little unlucky with those opening draws. He was forced to use a shadow flame in a fairly uh, un unvalue situation, I guess. Yep. You know, if that's the term, I don't that's think that is a term, but we'll of, use it anyway. It's a third of his deck, and he didn't yeah. get one in his opening. Round. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this deck, it has fourteen cards that cost one or less mana, and that is that aggro lock in a nutshell. Uh, everything costs very little, and you generally always have those cards at the beginning. You just yeah. did not. 